Hello, in this lecture we will find out the area of the green circle. In the drawing we have square ABCD. We know that one side of square ABCD equals to 4 units, so DC equals to DA equals to CB equals to AB equals to 4 units and inside this square we have this circle and we also know that the radius of this circle equals to 1 unit and we want to find out the area of this green circle so first of all I will present to you a new rule, rule number one. According to rule number one, A tangent to a circle is perpendicular to the radius drawn to its point of tendency so I will read all number one again According to all number one, a tangent to a circle is perpendicular to the radius drawn to its point of tangency. So, what is the meaning of rule number one? The meaning of rule number one is that if we have this circle and tangent AB this tangent tangent AB is tangent to this circle at this point, we define the touching point between the tangent and this circle is point M. Actually, point M is the point of tangency. Of tangent AB with this circle. And suppose that the radius of this circle is at this point, we will define the center of this circle as point O. We will join together points O and M by a straight line. OM is the radius of this circle. So here, this radius, the radius OM, it is drawn to the point, it is drawn to the point of tendency, that is to say it is drawn to point M that is the point of tendency. Therefore, according to rule number one, tangent AB will be perpendicular to this radius 
that is to say this angle will be equal to 90 degrees and this angle will be also equal to 90 degrees. So whenever you have a radius that is drawn to the point of tangency like in this drawing, this radius, the radius OM, it is drawn to the point of tendency, then according to rule number one, tangent AB will be perpendicular to this radius, that is to say this angle will be equal to 90 degrees and this angle will be also equal to 90 degrees. So I will read rule number one again. According to rule number one, a tangent to a circle, that is to say tangent AB, is perpendicular to the radius drawn to its point of tendency. So because of the fact that this radius, radius OM, it is drawn to the point of tendency, that is uh, to say it is drawn to point M, that is the point of tendency, of tangent AB with this circle, therefore the tangent AB will be perpendicular to this radius, that is to say this angle will be equal to 90 degrees and this angle will be also equal to 90 degrees. So, this is the meaning of all number one, and we actually can implement all number one in our drawing, because here we have, we define the center of this circle as point O, and we define the point of tendency of tangent AD with this circle as point M. So, as you can see in the drawing, we have the radius OM, it is drawn to the point of tendency, that is to say it is drawn to point M, that is the point of tendency of tangent AD with this circle, therefore, the tangent AD will be perpendicular to this radius. That is to say, this angle will be equal to 90 degrees, and this angle will be also equal to 90 degrees. Okay? And we also know that all four angles inside a square or right angles, therefore this angle, that is one out of four angles inside square ABCD will be a right angle, that is to say it will be equal to 90 degrees. We will define the point of tangency of tangent AB with this circle as point N. Point N is the point of tendency of tangent AB with this circle. Then we join together points O and N by a straight line. Actually, line segment O N. is the radius of this circle because of the fact that it starts from the center of the circle, that is to say from point O, and ends at point N, that is a point of the circle itself, therefore O N is the radius of this circle, that is to say it equals to R, and R equals to one unit. So we have this radius, the radius O N, it is drawn to the point of tendency, that is to say, it is drawn to point N, that is the point of tendency of tangent AB with this circle, therefore the tangent AB will be perpendicular to this radius, that is to say, this angle will be equal to 90 degrees, and this angle will be also equal to 90 degrees. Okay? And we will define the touching point of the point of tendency which is point E. So we will define the point of tendency of tangent C E with this circle as point K. Again, point K is the point of tendency of uh, 
tangent CE with this circle, then we will join two weather points O and K by a straight line. OK, line segment OK is the radius of this circle that equals to 1 because of the fact that line segment OK starts from point O that is the center of this circle and ends at point K that is a point on the circle itself. Therefore, OK is the radius of this circle that is to say it equals to 1 unit. And again, we have this radius, the radius OK or KO. It is drawn to the point of tangency, that is to say it is drawn to point K, that is the point of tangency of tangent C E in this circle. Therefore, according to rule number one, the tangent C E, this tangent, will be perpendicular to this radius, that is to say this angle will be equal to 90 degrees and this angle will be also equal to 90 degrees. Okay. In the next step, I will present to you a new rule, rule number two. According to rule number two, the sum of the angles in any quadrilateral is equal to 360 degrees. The sum of the angles in any quadrilateral is equal to 360 degrees. So, I will read all number two again. According to rule number two, the sum of the angles in any quadrilateral is equal to 360 degrees. Okay, so we will focus on this quadrilateral, quadrilateral M O A N, according to rule number two, the sum of its angles is equal to 360 degrees. So which angles quadrilateral M O A N has? It has three right angles, one, two, three. And the sum of three right angles is actually 90 times 3 is 270 degrees plus the size of this angle that we will define as angle X. The sum of those four angles must be equal to 360 degrees according to rule number two. So if we relate to quadrilateral MOAN, the quadrilateral MOAN. The sum of the angles must be equal to 360 degrees according to rule number 2. And for the other MOAN has three right angles that uh, the sum of them is 270 degrees. Plus the size of the fourth angle, that is angle X, must be equal to 360 degrees according to rule number 2. Okay. So here... We will, sub we, will, we will subtract uh, 270 degrees from this equality and we will get that angle X equals to 360 degrees minus 270 degrees, that is to say it equals to 90 degrees. So we found out that angle X is a right angle, it equals to 90 degrees, so we can 
substitute x by a right angle So as you can see, this quadrilateral, quadrilateral MOAN, has four right angles, and we also have all number three, according to all number three. The sum of the angles in any quadrilateral is equal to 360 degrees. I will write it down. The sum of the angles In any quadrilateral, is equal to three hundred sixty degrees. So I will read rule number three again, according to rule number three. The sum of the angles in any quadrilateral is equal to 360 degrees. So as you can see quadrilateral Uh, actually, this is not all number three. I actually accidentally repeated on all number two again. But all number three states that any quadrilateral that has four right angles must be at least a rectangle if not a square. So according to rule number three, any quadrilateral It is four right angles must be at least a left angle. Not a square. Can we repeat on rule number three again? According to rule number three, any quadrilateral that has four right angles. 
must be at least a rectangle in front of a square. So in front of a square, it must be at least a rectangle. So actually, as you can see, Quadrilateral MOAN has four right angles, therefore we relate, we relate to quadrilateral MOAN as, as a square, as a rectangle, because it has four right angles. So we will relate to quadrilateral MOAN as a rectangle. And we also have rule number four. According to rule number four, The opposite sides of a rectangle are equal to each other. So I will repeat on rule number four again, I call it to rule number four. The opposite sides of a rectangle are equal to each other, so if you relate to rectangle MOAN, in rectangle If you focus on rectangle MOAN, according to rule number four. The opposite sides of rectangle M O A N, this rectangle, are equal to each other. That is to say M O equals to A N. M O equals to A N according to rule number four. I'll repeat again. M O equals to A N according to rule number four. But it is given us in the question that M O equals to one unit. So we can write here that M O equals to one unit. So from this equality we will conclude that A N also equals to one unit. And n equals to one unit. So we can write here that a n also equals to one unit. Likewise, according to rule number four. MA also will be equal to ON. MA equals to ON according to rule number 
Og jeg vil bede dig gerne at gå ned til rundt, få en af i kostor og en. Og det er vores i navnet og en i kostor og en unit. So from this equality we will conclude that O N uh, that A M also equals to one unit. Okay? That M A also equals to one unit. that all sides of what the other M O A N or F single M O N are equal to each other, they are all equal to one unit and the rectangle of the other M O A N is four right angles. So I present to you no rule number five. According to rule number five, any quadrilateral that has four right angles and four equal sides must be a square so I repeat on one number five again according to one number five any quadrilateral that has four right angles and four equal sides must be a square. And if quadrilateral M O A N has four equal sides, all these sides are equal to one unit and also four right angles, therefore according to rule Number five, for the other M O A N is a square. So I write it down. For the other M O A N is a square according to rule number five. Okay, because it has four right angles and four equal sides. And we also have work number six. According to work number six,
the diagonals of the square the diagonals of a square by set the angles of the square into 45 degree angles. So I'll repeat on row number 6 again, according to row number 6, the diagonals of a square bisect the angles of the square into 45 degrees angles. So here we have our square, square M O A N, and according to rule number 6, the diagonal A O, this diagonal A O of square M O A N, but say this diagonal, diagonal OA, O square M O A N, bisects this angle, angle A, into two angles of 45 degrees. This, that is to say, this angle will be equal to 45 degrees, and this angle will be also equal to 45 degrees. Okay? And this, this is true according to O number 6. And if we relate to the big square, square A, B, C, D, then according to O number 6, the diagonal C, A, This diagonal, diagonal, diagonal CA bisects the same angle, angle A into two angles of 45 degrees. That is to say, this angle will be equal to 45 degrees and this angle will be also equal to 45 degrees. So, this is according to rule number 6. So, according to rule number 6, If we relate to the small square, square M O A N, then the diagonal O A of this small square creates angle A O N that equals to 45 degrees. So according to rule number 6, angle O A N equals to 45 degrees. This angle equals to 45 degrees. But because of the fact that point N is located on side AB, therefore we can say for sure that points A N and B are located on the same straight line. Therefore, it doesn't matter at all if we relate to this angle that equals to 45 degrees, a single O A N 
of uh, or if you relate to this angle angle that equals to 45 degrees as angle O A B. Why? Because point N is located on the same straight line as point point A and B. So it will be exactly the same thing to say that actually angle O A N or angle O A B they are both equal to 45 degrees, therefore we can say that angle O A B equals to 45 degrees. Okay, so according to rule number 6, the diagonal O A creates angle O A B that equals to 45 degrees. I'll write it down. Diagonal O A of square M O A N creates angle O A B this angle that equals to 45 degrees okay angle O A N B equals to 45 degrees and according to rule number 6, diagonal OA creates this angle, angle OAB, that equals to 45 degrees. So this is true according to rule number 6. Likewise, diagonal CA creates the same angle. Diagonal CA creates angle CAB that also equals to 45 degrees. So, diagonal CA of square ABCD creates angle CAB that also equals to 45 degrees. This is true according to rule number 6 because the diagonal CA in square ABCD bisects this angle to two angles of 45 degrees. That is to say, angle CAB equals to 45 degrees. This is according to rule number 6, so we found out that angle. O A B equals to 45 degrees according to number 6 and also angle C A B equals to also 45 degrees angle C A B actually of square A B C D also equals to 45 degrees according to rule number 6 so because of the fact that those two angles are both equal to 45 degrees, we will conclude that angle OAB equals to angle CAB. Okay, angle OAB equals to angle CO. Angle OAB equals to angle CAB because those two angles are both equal to 45 degrees, therefore they are equal to each other. So angle OAB equals to angle CAB and from the fact that angle OAB equals to angle CAB we will conclude that diagonal CA diagonal CA of square ABCD passes through point O so I will write it down we will conclude that diagonal CA of square ABCD passes for 
point O. And we'll see it again. From the fact that angle OAB equals to angle CAB, angle CAB equals to angle OAB, we will conclude that the angle CA of square ABCD passes for point O. Okay? Why diagonal CA must pass for point O? Because of the fact that we know that angle CAB is equal to angle OAB, it is impossible that diagonal CA will not pass for point O. If diagonal CA doesn't pass for point O if the angle CA doesn't pass doesn't pass for point O for this point then angle CAB will never be equal to angle OAB but because of the fact that angle CAB equals to angle OAB we will conclude that the angle CA passes for point O otherwise Otherwise, those two angles will never be equal to each other. Okay? So, in the next step, I will present to you a new rule, rule number 7. According to rule number 7, The length of a diagonal of a square is equal to square root of 2 multiplied by the length of the squares side. So I repeat again on, on rule number seven. According to rule number seven, the length of a diagonal of a square is equal to square root of two multiplied by the length of the square sides. So what is the meaning of rule number seven? The meaning of rule number seven is that if we have square A, B, C, D So this is square A, B, C, D. And 
we know that one side of t square, square a, b, c, d, equals to s units, so all of its sides are equal to s units in their lengths. Then if we know that one side of a square is equal to s units, then the length of its diagonal b, c, or a, d will be equal to square root of 2 times s units. Okay, again, if we know that one side of square a, b, c, d equals to s units in its length, then the length of its diagonal, diagonal b, c, or a, d will be equal to square root of 2 times s units. Okay, so we can implement rule number 7 in our drawing. So, first of all, we'll calculate the length of diagonal OA. So, in square MOAN, The length of diagonal OA will be equal to the length of the square sides and the length of one side of square MOAN is 1 times square root of 2. This is true according to rule number 7. 1 times square root of 2 equals to square root of 2 units. And if we relate to square A, B, C, D, the big square, then the length of the diagonal C, A or A, C will be equal to the length of square ABCD side, that is actually 4 units, times square root of 2, that is to say it equals to 4 times square root of 2 units, and OA equals to square root of 2 units. Okay? So, what is the value of CO? CO equals to CA minus OA. Again, CA minus CA minus OA equals to CO. I will write it down. CA minus CA. C A minus C A minus O A C A minus O A equals to C O. Okay, from the drawing you can see that C A minus O A equals to CO so CA equals to 4 times square root of 2 units minus OA OA equals to 1 times square root of 2 units and 4 times square root of 2 units minus 1 times 1 times square root of 2 units equals to 3 times square root of 2 units So we found out that CA, uh, CO equals to 3 times square root of 2 units. Okay? CO 
equals to CA minus OA, that is to say it equals to 4 times square root of 2 units minus 1 times square root of 2 units, that is to say CO equals to 3 times square root of 2 units. Okay, so you can write here that CA, CO equals to 3 times square root of 2 units, okay, because it equals to CA, that is 4 times square root of uh, root of 2 units, minus OA, this is 1 times square root of 2 units, and 4 times uh, square root of 2 units, one, minus 1 times square root of 2 units, equals to 3 times square root of 2 units. So we found out the value of CO. So we will focus on the triangle, the right triangle, triangle COK. Oh, we will focus on the right blue triangle, triangle COK, and we will implement the Pythagoras theorem in order to find out the value of CK. Okay. So according to the Pythagoras theorem, in triangle COK, The square of the hypotenuse equals to the sum of the squares of the perpendiculars in any right angle. So if we relate to the blue right angle, triangle C OK. The square of the hypotenuse, the hypotenuse is CO, therefore the square of the hypotenuse will, will be equal to CO square. Now, uh, CO square equals to the square of the hypotenuse equals to the sum of the squares of the perpendiculars. The sum of the squares of the perpendiculars is OK square. Plus CK square. I repeat again. In the right triangle, right blue triangle, I can see OK. According to the Pythagoras theorem, the square of the hypotenuse equals to the sum of the squares of the perpendiculars. The hypotenuse is CO, therefore the square of the hypotenuse is CO square, and it equals to the sum of the squares of the perpendiculars, that is to say it equals to OK square plus CK square. Okay. But we have already found out the value of CO. CO equals to 3 times square root of 2 units. If CO equals to 3 times square root of 2 units, then CO square will be equal to 3 times square root of 2 square. And it equals to OK square. OK equals to 1 unit, so OK square is 1 square, 1 square is 1, plus CK square. CK is the missing variable, so we will leave it as it is. So in conclusion, we found out that 3 times square root of 2 square equals to 1 plus CK square. 3 times square root of 2 square it equals to 9 times 8. 
So like it now, now. Nine times uh, two, it is actually nine times two. Equals to one plus CK square. Okay, square. So nine times two is eighteen. So I write it down. We will get that eighteen equals to one plus ck square. Here. We will subtract 1 from this equation, equation number 1, and we will get that 18 minus 1 is 17. So we got that 17 equals to CK square. Here we will take a look out of this equation, equation number 1, and we will get that CK equals to square root of 17 units. Hold on the value of CK. Here, CK equals to the square root of 17 units. So, in the next step, I will present to you a new rule, the last rule, rule number 8, according to rule number 8. The lengths of two tangents from a common external point. to a circle or equal so I will read all number 8 again according to all number 8 the lamps of two tangents from a common external point to a circle are equal. So what is the meaning of rule number eight? The meaning of rule number eight is that if we have a circle, a circle, and we also have an external point, point P. This is point P is defined as an external point. 
y point p is an external point in relation to this circle it is an external point why because point p is not located inside this circle nor on the this circle but it is located outside of this circle therefore it is defined as external point so if from the external point point p we will draw two tangents to this circle so this will be the first tangent we will define the point of tangency of the first tangent with this circle as point A and then we will draw a second tangent to this circle and we will define the point of tangency of the second tangent with this circle as point B then according to rule number 2 the lengths of two tangents from a common external point to a circle are equal. So this point, point P, is defined as a common external point. And from this point, we draw two tangents. The, the first tangent is tangent PA. And the second tangent is tangent PB. And according to rule number 8, whenever you draw two tangents from a common external point, that is to say from point P, you draw two tangents to a circle to the circle, then the lengths of those two tangents will be equal to each other. The length of this first tangent is PA, the length of the second tangent is BB, and according to rule number 8, they are equal to each other. Their length is equal to each other. That is to say PA equals to PB. Again, whenever you have an external point of a circle and you draw two tangents to that circle, then the lengths of those two tangents will be equal to each other. Okay? In this case, PA equals to PB. Why? Because when you draw uh, two tangents from a common external point, like in this drawing, point P is a common external point, then according to rule number 8, the length of those two tangents will be equal to each other. This is to say PA equals to PB. And we can implement rule number 8 in our drawing, because in our drawing we have this point E is defined as an external point of this circle, and point, point E we have two tangents to this circle. The first tangent is tangent EN. The second tangent is tangent EK. And according to rule number 8, the length of those two tangents are equal to each other. That is to say, EN equals to EK according to rule number 8. Okay? And if we define En as x, or Ne as x, that is to say Ne equals to x units in its uh, length. So En equals to x. If we define this En equals to x, then from this equality we will conclude that Ek also equals to x. Ek also equals to x. So we can write here that Ek also equals to x. So in the next step, we will calculate the length 
offline segment EB. Okay, we will calculate the length of line segment EB. So what is the length of line segment EB? The length of line segment EB it is actually equals to AB, AB minus AN minus NE. So I write it down. The length of line segment EB or side EB equals to AB minus AN minus NE okay you can see it from the drawing that the length of EB equals to AB minus AN minus EN so EB equals to AB what is the value of AB? AB equals to the length of the square side, that is 4 units, minus AN. The length of AN equals to 1 unit, minus NE. NE equals to X units, according to our definition. So in conclusion, we found out that EB equals to 4 minus 1, minus x, 4 minus 1 is 3, so in conclusion we got that EB equals to 3 minus x. EB equals to 3 minus x. So we can write here that EB equals to 3 minus x, and what is the value of BC, BC equals to the length of the square ABCD sides, and according to what is given us in the question, AD equals to 4 units, so all the sides of a square are equal to each other, therefore it also equals to 4 units. And we also found out, we have also found out that CE, CE equals to square root of 17 units plus X. So the only missing variable that we have here is x, so we'll focus and this angle, angle ABC, it is one out of four angles of square ABCD, therefore it equals to 90 degrees because all four angles inside the square are right angles, and this is a, a, an angle that is inside square ABCD, therefore it equals to 90 degrees. So angle ABCD, angle ABC equals to 90 degrees. So we will focus on the green right triangle, triangle CBE. In the green right triangle, triangle CBE, according to the Pythagoras theorem,
the square of the hypotenuse equals to the sum of the squares of the perpendiculars. And the hypotenuse, the green right triangle, triangle CEB, it is CE. Therefore, the square of the hypotenuse is CE square. And it equals to the sum of the squares of the perpendiculars. That is to say, it equals to EB square plus BC square. So I'll repeat again, in the right triangle, right, right green triangle, triangle CB, according to the Pythagoras theorem, the square of the hypotenuse equals to the sum of, of the squares of the perpendiculars. The hypotenuse is CE, therefore the square of the hypotenuse is CE square, and it equals to the sum of the squares of the perpendiculars, that is to say it equals to EB square plus BC square. Okay, but we have already found out the value of CE. CE as you can see from the drawing, it equals to square root of 17 plus x. So CE square will be equal to square root of 17 plus x square. Again, CE equals to square root of 17 plus x. So CE square will be equal to square root of 17 plus x square. And it equals to BE square. BE equals to 3 minus x. Therefore, BE square will be equal to 3 minus x square plus BC square. BC equals to 4 units. Therefore, BC square will be equal to 4 square. 4 square is 16. So, in conclusion, we found out that square root of 17 plus x square equals to 3 minus x square plus 16. Here we will open the brackets on both sides of equation number 2 and we will get that square root of 17 plus x squared equals to 17 plus x squared plus 2 times square root of 17 times x and it equals to 3 minus x square 3 minus x square is equal to 9 plus x square minus 6x plus 16 so here we have x square in both sides of equation number two so x square will get cancelled and what is left from equation number two after we cancelled x square what is left it is actually here we have 16 plus 9 16 plus 9 is 25 so i'll write it down here we have in this side of equation number two 25 minus 6x and here we have what is left only is uh, 17 plus 2 times square root of 17x here we will subtract 17 for this equation equation number 2 and we will get that 2 times square root of 17 x equals to 25 minus 17 is 8 minus 6x here we will divide this equation equation number 2 by 2 and we will get that 12 out of 17x 2 over 2 is 1 so here we have square of 17x equals to 
4, uh, 8 over 2 is 4, and minus 6 over 2 is minus 3x. So in conclusion, we found out that according to equation number 2, square root of 17x equals to 4 minus 3x. Here we will add 3x to this equation, equation number 2, and we will get that According to equation number 2, square root of 17x plus 3x equals to 4. common factor x from these expressions. So x is a common factor. What is left from square root of 17 times x after we took from it x, x, x as a common factor. What is left it is actually square root of 17. And what is left from 3x after we took from it x as a common factor? What is left? It is actually 3 and it equals to 4. Here we will divide this equation, equation number 2, by square root of 17 plus x in order to find out the value of x. And we will get that the value of x is equal to 4 over square root of 17 plus 3. Okay, so we found out the value of x. So here we will multiply this side of the equation by seven, square root of 17 minus 3, and then we will divide it by square root of 17 minus 3 in order to get rid from the square root and the denominator. Okay, and we will get that x equals to 4, we multiply it by square root of 17 minus 3, and then we will divide it by square root of 17 minus 3. And it is square root of 17 plus 3. So here we will calculate the value of square root of 17 plus 3 times square root of 17 minus 3 according to the algebraic identity that says that a plus b times a minus b equals to a square minus b square in our specific uh, equation a will be equal to square root of 17 and b will be equal to 3. And uh, we will get that according to equation number 2, x will be equal to 4 times square root of 17 minus 3. So here we know that a plus b times a minus b equals to a square minus b square. And here we have a plus b times a minus b and it equals to a square minus b square. That is to say it equals to a square. a square is square root of 17 square is 17 
minus b square. b is 3, so b square will be equal to 9, so it is minus 9. So in conclusion, we got this equation, equation number 2. As you can see here, now we don't have any square roots in the denominator, and that's what we wanted to do by multiplying x uh, in uh, square root of 17 minus 3, and then we divide it by square root of 17 minus 3. In order to get rid from the square root in the denominator. So here, we know that 17 minus 9 is 8, so we write it down. In the denominator, we left only with 8. And in the numerator, we have 3 times square root of 17 minus 3 over 17 minus 9 is 8. Here, we will divide both sides of this. Uh, we will divide this side of the equation by 4, the numerator and the denominator. 4 over 4 is 1, so in the numerator we have only left with square root of 17 minus 3. And in the denominator, 8 over 4 is 2. In conclusion, we got that x equals to square root of 17 minus 3 over 2. So we found out the value of x. As you can see here, we have the value of x without any square root in the, in the denominator. So what is the area of the green right triangle? The area of this green right triangle or the area of any triangle is equal to the base of the triangle times the i to the base over 2 this is the area of any triangle so the area of any triangle, as you can see, this is the sign for the area. The area of any triangle is equals to the base of the triangle times the height to the base over 2. And what is the base of the green eye triangle, triangle CBE? The base of the right green triangle, triangle CBE. It is actually equal to the base is BE and the height is BC over 2. I repeat again. The R of triangle CBE, this is the sign of R. It means the R of triangle CBE equals to the base that is BE times the height that is BC over 2. What is the value of BE? BE equals to 3 minus X. And CB 
or b is equals to 4 over 2. So in conclusion, we found out that the area of the green right triangle triangle CB equals to 3 minus x times 4 over 2. 4 over 2 is 2, so I'll write it down. The area of the green right triangle triangle CBE equals to Three minus x times two. Okay, the area of the green I tangent and tag and CBE equals to two times three minus x. We have already found out that x equals to square root of seventeen minus three over two. So I'll write it here that the value of x the value of x according to equation number two, x equals to square root of 17 minus 3 over 2 according to equation number 2 x equals to square root of 17 minus 3 over 2 so we will place the value of x from this equation equation number 2 inside x in equation number 3 and we will get that the area of the green right triangle, triangle CBE equals to, according to equation number 3, it equals to 2 times 3 minus x and x according to equation number 2 it equals to square root of 17 minus 3 over 2 So here we will multiply 3 by 2 and then we will divide it by 2 in order to have a common factor with this expression and we will get that the area of the green right triangle triangle CBE according to equation number 3 equals to Two times six minus square root of seventeen minus three in brackets over two. So here two over two is one, so two will get cancelled. And what is left from equation number three after we cancelled two? After we cancel 2, what is left from equation number 3 is that the area of the green right triangle triangle CBE equals to 6 minus square root of 17 and here we have minus minus 3, minus minus 3 is plus 3. So in conclusion, we got that the area of the green right triangle, triangle CBE equals to 6 plus 3 is 9 minus square root of 17 square units or in terms of numbers, the area of the green right triangle, triangle CBE equals to 4.88 square units. Again, the area of the green right triangle triangle CBE equals to either 9 minus square root of 17 square units, or in terms of numbers, the area of the green right triangle triangle CBE equals to 4.88 square units. I will repeat again, the area 
of this green right triangle triangle CBE equals to either 9 minus square root of 17 square units or in terms of numbers the area of the green right triangle triangle CBE equals to 4.88 square units okay thank you very much so now I will summarize the lecture actually we wanted to find out the area of this green right triangle, triangle CBE and uh, we have here square ABCD and uh, we know that one side of square ABCD equals to 4 units therefore AB equals to BC equals to, to CD equals to DA equals to 4 units and inside this square of square ABCD we have a circle and the radius of this circle equals to 1 unit and we want to find out the area of this green triangle so in order to find out the area of this green right triangle I presented to you a new rule rule number one according to rule number one a tangent to a circle is perpendicular to the radius drawn to its point of tangency so what is the meaning of rule number one? The meaning of rule number one is that if we have this is a circle and we have tangent AB, tangent AB is tangent to this circle at point M, point M is the point of tangency of tangent AB with this circle and for the center of the circle we drew perpendicular to uh, we, from point O that is the center of this circle we draw radius of this circle this radius OM it is drawn to the point of tangency that is to say it is drawn to point M that is the point of tangency of tangent AB with this circle therefore whenever you have a radius that is drawn to the point of tangency like in this picture then the tangent AB will be perpendicular to this radius that is to say this angle will be equal to 90 degrees and this angle will be also equal to 90 degrees so we can implement rule number one in our drawing because in our drawing we have this radius is drawn to the point of tangency that is to say it is drawn to point M that is the point of tangency of tangent DA with this circle Therefore, the tangent AD will be perpendicular to this radius. That is to say, this angle equals to 90 degrees, and this angle will be also equal to 90 degrees. And we also know that all four angles inside the square are right angles. This angle, angle uh, DAB, is one out of four angles inside square ABCD. Therefore, it is a right angle, it equals to 90 degrees. And here also we have this radius O n, it is drawn to the point of tendency. That is to say, it is drawn to point n, that is the point of tendency of tangent AB with this circle. Therefore, according to rule number one, this angle will be equal to 90 degrees, and this angle will be also equal to 90 degrees. And we, then we join points O and K together by a straight line. Point K is the point of tendency of tangent EC in this circle and we have this radius OK that is drawn to the point of tendency therefore uh, the tangent CE will be perpendicular to this radius according to rule number one that is to say this angle will be equal to 90 degrees and this angle will be also equal to 90 degrees then I presented to you rule number two according to rule number two the sum of the angles in any quadrilateral is equal to 360 degrees. And if we relate to quadrilateral MOAN according to rule number 2, the sum of its angles must be equal to 360 degrees. So which angles uh, quadrilateral MOAN has? It has three right angles, one, two, three. The sum of three right angles is 270 degrees. 
plus the size of the fourth angle must be equal to the sum of those four, four angles must be equal to 360 degrees according to rule number two. That is to say in quadrilateral M O Y N, 270 degrees plus X must be equal to 360 degrees. We subtract the 270 degrees from this equality and we got that the size of the the size of angle X is actually it equals to 90 degrees, it is a right angle. So we can see in the drawings uh, that quadrilateral M O A N has four right angles. And we have also rule number three according to rule number three, any quadrilateral that has four right angles must be at least a rectangle, if not a square. And because of the fact the quadrilateral M O A N, this quadrilateral has four right angles, we will relate to quadrilateral M O A N as a rectangle. Okay? Then I presented to you rule number four. According to rule number four, the opposite sides of a rectangle are equal to each other. And we know that quadrilateral M O A N is a rectangle, therefore the opposite sides of rectangle M O A N will be equal to each other, that is to say M O equals to A N according to rule number four. M O equals to A N. Okay? But we I already know that MO equals to one unit, so we can write here that MO equals to one unit, and from this equality we will get that AN also equals to one unit, AN equals to one unit. Likewise, side MA of rectangle MO AN will be equal to side ON, according to rule number four. Okay? M a will be equal to an O, according to rule number four. But we know that an O equals to one unit. We already found out that an O equals to one unit. So from this equality, we will get that M A also equals to one. So we can write here that M A equals to one. So actually, we found out that all four sides of uh, rectangle or quadrilateral M O A N are equal to each other and it has also four right angles. And we have also rule number five, according to rule number five, any quadrilateral that has four right angles must be at least a rectangle if not a square. And any uh, rule number five says that any quadrilateral that has four right angles and four equal sides must be a square. And because of the fact that we have already found out that quadrilateral M O A N has four right angles and also four equal sides, we will conclude that according to rule number five, quadrilateral M O A N is a square. Quadrilateral M O A N is a square according to rule number five because it has four right angles and four equal sides. And according to rule number five, any quadrilateral that has four right angles and four equal sides must be a square. Therefore, quadrilateral M O A N is a square. So this quadrilateral is a square, and we also have rule number six. According to rule number six. The diagonals of a square bisects the angle of a square into 45 degrees angles. So we know that quadrilateral M O A N is a square, therefore the diagonal O A of this square bisects this angle, angle A, into two angles of 45 degrees. This is, that is to say this angle will be equal to 45 degrees. And this angle will be also equal to 45 degrees. Okay, so angle O A N equals to 45 degrees. But because of the fact that point N is located on side AB, 
and actually all three points A, N, A, N and B are located on the same straight line. Therefore, it doesn't matter if we call to this angle that equals to 45 degrees, angle O, A, N or angle O, A, B. Why? Because those uh, three points are located on the same straight line. Okay, even uh, if we have on this straight line that points A and, and B are located, another point, point uh, Z, and we will call to this angle that equals to 45 degrees, angle O, A, Z, it will be the same angle. It will always be equal to 45 degrees, it doesn't matter at all. It will, if we call it angle O A Z, angle O A B, or angle O A N, it will always be the same angle that equals to 45 degrees. So we will call to this angle, angle that uh, this angle that equals to 45 degrees, angle O A B, angle O A B equals to 45 degrees according to rule number six because of the fact that. The diagonal OA bisects this angle into two angles of 45 degrees. Therefore, angle OA equals to 45 degrees of square MOA equals to 45 degrees. Angle OAB equals to 45 degrees according to rule number 6. Likewise, if we relate to the big square, square ABCD, each diagonal, diagonal CA, bisects this angle, the same angle, into two angles of 45 degrees. That is to say, this angle equals to 45 degrees, and this angle also equals to 45 degrees. And this angle is angle CAB. So therefore, if we need to uh, diagonal CA in square ABCD, angle CAB also equals to 45 degrees, according to rule number 6. So we have here two angles that are equal both to 45 degrees. Angle OAB equals to 45 degrees and angle CAB also equals to 45 degrees. So, uh, therefore, they are equal also to each other. That is to say angle OAB equals to angle CAB. Why? Because they are equal to each other, therefore, uh, because of the, that both of them are equal to 45 degrees, they must be equal to each other, that is to say angle CAB equals to angle OAB. And because of the fact that angle CAB equals to angle OAB, we will conclude that the diagonal CA passes for point O. The diagonal CA must pass for point O. Otherwise, angle CAB will never be equal to angle OAB, but because of the fact that angle CAB equals to angle OAB, the diagonal CA must pass for point O. Okay? So, we will conclude that diagonal CA, from the fact that angle OAB equals to angle CAB, we will conclude that diagonal CA of square ABCD passes for point O. Okay, then I present it to you rule number seven. According to rule number seven, the lengths. Here it is the lengths. The lengths. Ah, it is actually the length. Actually, it is the length. The length of a diagonal of a square is equal to square root of 2 multiplied by the length of the square's side. So what is the meaning of rule number 7? The meaning of rule number 7 is that if we have this square, square A, B, C, D, and we know that one side, the length of one side of square A, B, C, D equals to S units, so if the length of this square square ABCD of one side is equal to S units, then the length of its diagonal BC of AD will be equal to S times square root of two units. Okay, so we always will multiply the length of the square size by square root of two in order to get 
the length of its diagonal. Okay, so we multiplied here the length of one side of square ABCD by square root of 2 in order to get the length of its diagonal, that is BC. So the length of BC according to rule number 7 is equal to S times square root of 2 units. So that is the meaning of rule number 7. So whenever you want to know what is the length of uh, the diagonals, the square's diagonal, you will multiply the length of its side by square root of 2 and in this way we will get to the, you will get to the length of its diagonal to the length of the diagonal square so we can implement rule number 7 in our drawing because in our drawing we have square m o a n and we want to find out the length of diagonal o a according to rule number 7 the length of diagonal o a equals to the length of its side that is 1 unit times square root of 2. That is to say the length of diagonal OA in square MOA and equals to 1 times square root of 2. That is to say it equals to square root of 2 units. Likewise in the big square square ABCD if you want to find out the length of uh, diagonal CA or AC it will be equal to the length of the square side that is 4 units times uh, so, uh, times square root of 2. So when we multiply the length of uh, 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 square ABCD side by square root of 2, we will get to the length of its diagonal. So the length of diagonal CA of square ABCD will be equal to 4 times square root of 2 units. And the length of uh, diagonal OA is for the, uh, in, in square MON, in square MON will be equal to 1, that is the length of its side times square root of 2. So, in, total, in conclusion, the length of the small square is square root of 2 units, and the length of the big square equals to 4 times square root of 2 units. Okay, so what is the length of uh, CO? The length of CO will be equal to CA minus OA. Again, CA minus OA equals to CO. Okay, I repeat again. CA minus OA equals to CO. But we only found out that CA equals to 4 times square root of 2 units and OA equals to square root of 2 units. So 4 times square root of 2 units minus 1 times square root of 2 units equals to 3 times square root of 2 units. So we found out that CO equals to 3 times square root of 2 units. And then we focused on the green right triangle, triangle COK and we implemented the Pythagoras theorem in the right blue triangle, triangle COK. If only to the Pythagoras theorem, the square of the hypotenuse equals to the sum of the squares of the perpendiculars, the hypotenuse is CO. So the square of the hypotenuse is CO squared and it equals to the sum of the squares of the perpendiculars. That is to say, it equals to OK squared plus CK squared. So in the right triangle, triangle COK. COK, uh, CO square equals to OK square plus CK square. But we have already found out that CO equals to 3 times square root of 2. So CO square will be equal to 3 times square root of 2 square. And it equals to OK square. OK equals to 1. So 1 square is 1. And CK square and CK square is the missing variable. So here 3 times square root of 2 square equals to 9 times 2 plus 1 equals to CK square. 9 times 2 is 18, so 18 equals to 1 plus CK square. We subtracted 1 from this equation, equation number 2, or equation number 1, and we found out that 18 minus, uh, 18 minus 1 is 17. 17 equals to CK square. We took a root of this equation, equation number 1, and we found out that CK equals to square root of 17 units. So here, 
CK equals to square root of 17 units. Then I present to I present to you I present to you rule number eight. According to rule number eight, the lengths of two tangents from a common external point to a circle are equal. So what is the meaning of rule number eight? The meaning of rule number eight is that if we have this circle and we have the external point point P and from the external point point P we withdraw two tangents then the length of those two tangents will be equal to each other that is to say PA equals to PB so whenever you draw two tangents from a common side point of a circle to that circle then the length of those two tangents will be equal to each other in this case PA equals to PB okay and implemented rule number 8 in our drawing. In our drawing we have the external point, point E. And from the external point, point E we draw, we have two tangents to the circle. We have tangent EN and we have the second tangent is then tangent EK. And according to rule number 8, the length, of, the length of those two tangents are equal to each other. That is to say EN equals to EK. EN equals to EK according to rule number 8. We defined EN as X, that is to say EN equals to X according to our definition. From this equality we will conclude that EK also equals to X. So EN equals to X and EK also equals to X. And we found out the, we find, we found out the value of line segment EB. The value of line segment EB it is actually equals to AB, AB minus AN. Minus NE equals to EB. Again, EB equals to AB minus AN minus NE. So EB equals to AB is 4, AN is 1, and NE is X. So in conclusion, EB equals to 4 minus 1 minus X. That is to say, EB equals to 3 minus X. So we found out that EB equals to 3 minus X. BC is one side of square ABCD, therefore it equals to 4 units. And we have only found out that CE equals to square root of 17 plus X. Then we implemented the Pythagoras theorem. This is the green triangle and the right triangle because this angle is the right angle. It is 1 out of 4 angles of square ABCD. That is all the angles inside the square are right angles. Therefore, this is the right angle. Therefore, triangle, the green right triangle CBE is the right triangle. So we implemented the Pythagoras theorem in the right triangle triangle CBE according to the Pythagoras theorem. The square of the hypotenuse equals to the sum of the squares of the perpendiculars. That is to say, the hypotenuse is CE. CE is the hypotenuse, therefore the square of the hypotenuse is CE squared. And it equals to the sum of the squares of the perpendiculars. That is to say, it equals to EB squared plus BC squared. CE CE equals to square root of 17 plus x. Therefore, CE squared will be equal to square root of 17 plus x squared. And it equals to EB squared. EB equals to 3 minus x. So EB squared will be equal to 3 minus x squared plus BC squared. BC equals to 4 units. Therefore, BC squared will be equal to 4 six, uh, square. 4 square is 16. So, here we open the brackets on both sides of equation number 2 and we got that square root of 17 plus x equals to 17 plus x squared plus 2 times square root of 17 times x and it equals to 3 minus x squared. 3 minus x squared equals to 9 plus x squared minus 6x and here we have 16 so we copied it here. We copied it here. And here we have x squared on both sides of equation number 2 so x squared will get cancelled. And that is what is left. Uh, and then we have know that uh, 16 plus 9 is 25. So in, in conclusion, we got that 17 plus 2 times square root of 17x equals to 25 minus 6x. We subtracted 17 from this equality and we got that 2 times square root of 17 equals to 25 minus 17 is 8. So in conclusion, we got that 2 times square root of 17x equals to 8 minus 6x. 
Here we demanded this equation, equation number 2 by 2, and we got that square root of 17x equals to 8 over 2 is 4, and minus 6 over 2 is minus 3x. So in conclusion, we got that square root of 17 equals to 4 minus 3x. We added 3x to this equation, equation number 2, and we got that Square root of 17x plus 3x equals to 4. Here we took out a common factor. We took out x as a common factor of these expressions. And we got that x inside the brackets. We have square root of 17 plus 3 equals to 4. We divided this equation by square root of 17 plus 3. And we got that x equals to 4 over square root of 17 plus 3. Here we multiplied this expression by square root of 17 minus 3, and then we divide it by square root of 17 minus 3. And, uh, okay, we multiply it by square root of 17 minus 3, and then we divide it by square root of 17 minus 3, and we use this equation, uh, this algebraic identity, in order to find out the value of this expression a plus b a minus b equals to a, a square minus b square a equals to square root of 17 b and b equals to 3 so a square is 17 and b square is 9 so in conclusion we will get that this expression equals to 17 minus 9 so in conclusion we got that x equals to 4 times square root of 17 minus 3 over 17 minus 9, 17 minus 9 is 8, so in conclusion we got that x equals to 4 times square root of 17 minus 3 over 8. We divided this side of equation number 2 by 4, 4 over 4 is 1, so 4 will get cancelled, and 4 over 2 is 4 over 2 is 8 over 2, uh, we divided this equation, equation number 2 by 4, 4 over 4 is 1, so 4 will get cancelled, and 8 over 4 is 2. So in conclusion we got that x equals to square root of 17 minus 3 over 2, so we found out the value of x, and uh, then the area of any triangle, it equals to the base of the triangle times the i to the base over 2, so the area of our triangle, triangle CBE, the area of the green area triangle, triangle CBE, will be equal to the base of the triangle times the height over 2. The base is BE and the height is BC. So it is BE times BC over 2. So the area of the green area triangle, triangle CBE equals to the base. The base is 3 minus X and the height is 4. So it is 3 minus X times 4 over 2. 4 over 2 is 2, so in conclusion we got that the area of the green right triangle triangle CB equals to 4 over 2 is 2, so it is 2 times 3 minus x. But this is according to equation number 3, but according to equation number 2, the value of x is square root of 17 minus 3 over 2, so we can place the value of x from equation number 2 in this x from equation number 3, so we did it and, and we got that the area of the green right triangle triangle CB equals to 2 times 3. Here we place the value of x inside x, so x equals to square root of 17 minus 3 over 2. Here we multiply 3 by 2 and then we divide it by 2 in order to have a common factor with this expression. So in conclusion we got that the area of the green right triangle triangle CB equals to 2 times 6 minus square root of 17 minus 3 over 2. 2 over 2 is 1, so 2 will get cancelled, and after we cancel 2, what is left from equation number 3 is that CB equals to 6, and we open the brackets, it is 6 minus 17, minus minus 3 is plus 3, so in conclusion we got that the R of, uh, of triangle, the green right triangle, triangle CB equals to 6 minus 7, uh, 6 minus square root of 17 plus 3, so the R of uh, the green right triangle triangle CB equals to 6 plus 3 is 9 minus square root of 17. So in conclusion, we got that the R of the green right triangle triangle CB equals to either 9 minus square root of 17 square root. So in terms of numbers, the R of the green right triangle triangle CB equals to 4.88.
Square units are repeating in. The error of this green I triangle triangle CBE equals to either 9 minus square root of 17 square units or in terms of numbers, the error of this green I triangle triangle CBE equals to 4.88 square units. Okay? Thank you very much.